guys, it is a hot, sticky, miserable winter day here in the second collapse of global, well, the second collapse of civilization here in the Mayan kingdom of Chetamal, Mexico. It is a Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, and we all know what that means. It is International Margarita Day today. Hallelujah. So I have to get out there and celebrate International Margarita Day. And I am so excited. <coughs> I am so excited to be celebrating International Margarita Day. That uh, We're going to uh, head over to medium.com. And, and in the middle of all of my doom and gloom, here, this is buried somewhere in the middle of my doom and gloom on International Margarita Day. I am thrilled to see that uh, I guess I can just go find a new job, perhaps as a, uh, <coughs> as a margarita researcher. This is by a fellow, never heard of him, Reteggi. Lerand, I guess, maybe Reteggi is from Italy or somewhere. Reteggi Lerand has 358 followers. He calls himself an INTJ. I have no idea what an INTJ is. I think it's a personality type. He is a philosophy enthusiast. He is a sports-loving Jim Enjoyer, European. He is a side hustler, AI loving, lifestyle sharing, uh, maybe stuck 2,500 years in the future. This young man uh, is stuck 2,500 years in the future, but uh, Reteji is not going 2,500 years in the future. He's just going seven years in the future. So this is this, I guess he's a generation Zer. So what's on the mind? I th I'm guessing he's a Gen Zer. What is on his mind? <clears throat> Why the world will become perfect, perfect by 2030, even though it's a total chaos now. It is a total chaos now. Okay. The world is in chaos. Climate change, war, poverty, and inequality continue to plague our planet despite decades of an effort to put an end to them. But what if we could turn this tide and make the world a perfect place within the next 10 years, or I guess hell, seven years. It may sound far-fetched, but it is not impossible. In this blog post, we will explore why the world will become perfect by 2030, even though right now, it feels like total chaos from new technologies and global cooperation hmm, to innovative solutions to, to innovative solutions to seemingly intractable problems. Read on to learn more about how we can create a peaceful and prosperous future for all humanity by 2030. We're gonna start with the fourth industrial revolution. <clears throat> Nowadays, it seems like the world is more chaotic than ever, but many people believe that we are on the brink of a new era, the fourth industrial revolution. This theory was first proposed by Klaus Schwab, hmm, executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. Klaus Schwab believes 
that we are currently witnessing a fundamental change in the way we live, work, and interact with each other. Yes, Klaus, I, I have to say we are currently witnessing a fundamental change in the way we live, work, and interact with each other. Uh -huh. The fourth industrial revolution is characterized by a fusion of, techno of technologies that are blurring the lines between fantasy and reality. Oops, I'm sorry. Blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. We are seeing unprecedented developments in fields such as artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotechnology, and 3D printing. This new era is also marked by increased global connectivity thanks to the Internet of Things and social media. All of these factors are leading to a radically different world where traditional boundaries are being increasingly blurred. So, what does this all mean for our future? Many experts believe, many experts, he has no citation, many experts believe that the fourth industrial revolution will bring about major changes in the way we live and work. For example, there could be a shift away from traditional jobs to on-demand work such as freelancing or gig work digging people out of rubble. We might also see an increase in collaborative working arrangements such as co-working spaces or remote working. There is no doubt, no doubt, that the fourth industrial revolution will bring about major changes to our world, but whether these changes will be positive or negative remains to be seen. What is certain is that we need to be pre prepared for a world that is very different from and then it just drops off. Okay, now let's look at the UN's, what is the United Nations view for 2030? Okay, this is according to our friends at the United Nations, but probably not according to the climatologist, you, you, you know, at the IPCC. They might argue with this about the UN's view of the world in seven years. <clears throat> in 2030, the world will be a much different place than it is today. The United Nations has released a report, and it's not, it's neither dire nor grim, apparently. I don't see a dire report or a grim report. The United Nations has released a report that outlines their view of the future. They predict that the world will be more populous, do you think so? More urban, do you think so? And more connected. They also believe that there will be more equality between genders and races. The UN's report, which is nowhere cited here, the UN's report is based on their Sustainable Development Goals. Yes, the oxymoron of the 21st century, Sustainable Development. Yes, the UN's report is based on their oxymoronic Sustainable Development Goals, which are a set of goals that member states have agreed to work towards. Now, he leaves out the fact that 
every sustainable development goal, I'm pretty sure virtually 100% of them, along with 100% of the biodiversity protecting uh, goals, 100% of them failure, total abject failure so far, but you know, that's just in the last 17, 23 years, whatever. We're going to turn this around in seven years. Okay. The Sustainable Development Goals, which are a completely failed set of goals that member states have agreed to work towards, these goals include ensuring, ensuring that all people have access to education, health care, and clean water, eliminating poverty, and protecting the environment. We need more people out of poverty to protect the environment. We need more people consuming more stuff. The more people we have on this planet consuming more stuff, the better the environment will be. It's right here in the UN Sustainable Development Goals and Renatech G. Laurent is telling us all about it. If the world, if the world can achieve these goals, despite the fact that it has never achieved one of them yet, then it will be a much better place in 2030. However, it will take a lot of hard work and dedication from everyone involved. It is important to remember that even though the world may seem chaotic now, there is still a there is still there is still uh, 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 for a better future. The world is constantly changing and evolving, and it can be difficult to keep up with the pace of progress. However, despite the chaos that may seem to reign in the world at times, there is always, uh, there is always, uh, there is always, uh, always, uh, always uh, 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 for a better future. The key to making the world a better place is to focus on creating peace and stability. There are many ways to promote peace and stability in the world. One important way is to support international organizations that help countries resolve conflicts and build bridges of understanding between different cultures. Another way to promote peace is through education by teaching people about different cultures and perspectives, we can help them understand and respect one another. Ultimately, ultimately, it is up to each of us to do our part in creating a more peaceful and stable world. We can start by promoting understanding and respect in our own communities. Every act of kindness makes a difference, and collectively, we can make the world a better place for all. Hmm. Okay, we have 11 comments here. Oh, here's our old friend Dale Wolver. Wow. Talk about clueless. That is quite the fairy tale you're spinning. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, here is Gary Janaz. 
So what does this all mean for our future? Rosy outlook, but I just don't see it. Yes, ever since the U.S. elected Donald Trump, we have been racing backwards towards the abyss. I would say ever since we elected uh, George Washington, we have been racing backwards towards the abyss. I have no faith in today's leaders to lead us anywhere but disaster. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's listen to this fellow named Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles. What does Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles have to say about this story? I hear Santa Claus is gearing up for the fourth industrial revolution by making his sleigh self-driving. Bad news for Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But hey, there will be some winners and some losers. The Easter Bunny will be replacing landmines with eggs full of fairy dust. And the Tooth Fairy will be leaving Bitcoin under pillows. With any luck, the green cheese mines on the moon will be in full swing in seven years. So goodbye, world hunger. Thank you, Sam Mitchell of Collapse Chronicles. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, guys, uh, so with that, I am going to do my part by what did he say? Embracing other cultures. I'm going to head out into the collapsed Mayan empire and I'm going to embrace my, my Mexican neighbors and celebrating International Margarita Day as my part to uh, bringing peace and tranquility to this planet and making a better future for us all. I highly advise you to get out there and celebrate uh, International Margarita Day while you still can. Sandy just sent me this long article about how climate change could end up uh, destroying the blue agave crop. Anyway, I'm off to look for a margarita and enjoy the sound of existential dread while I still can. Bye guys.